Hello, and welcome to the 2020 debates. Um, we apologize for the slight delay. We're trying to make sure that every candidate has the opportunity to log on. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So good morning from the comfort of your homes and offices across the, the Inland Empire and beyond. I'm Sierra Hammond, the Director of External Affairs for ASI, and welcome to the 2020 Executive Officer Debate sponsored by the Associated Students Incorporated of Cal State San Bernardino. On behalf of ASI, we want to thank you all for joining us here today as we broadcast live from Zoom and YouTube to the entire campus community. The 2020 ASI election cycle launched on April 19th, 2020, and since then, our virtual engagement platforms have been surrounded with the vibrant campaigns from fellow peers, each one engaging with the community on their values and goals through their personal social media accounts. Candidates today will be seeking to hold the highest student office at this university, and we'll be discussing their platforms on issues that they would like to address, ultimately seeking for your vote on May 6th and May 7th. As a reminder to all, the ASI elections are at the heart of the student body and consequentially serve as the ultimate function for the corporation and its operations. As we get this program started, we want to provide you all with a couple of announcements as they relate to the elections process. Online voting. Beginning May 6th, students who are eligible to vote as defined in the ASI bylaws, will, will receive a message to their Coyote emails at coyote.csusb.edu containing a link to an ASI ballot. Each email will be unique in character and will only allow access to its intended receiver. Online voting will close on Thursday, May 7th at 11.59 p.m. If you have any questions about this process or encounter any errors on your ballot, please contact our elections coordinator, Juliana Crespo at 909 537-7210. If you would like to join us for the results of the election, please join us on Zoom and Instagram Live on May 8th. For more information on access will be sent out soon. Website. A digital platform has been launched as a part of an effort to increase awareness. Your ASI has created a website to keep you all informed about this year's election cycle. This website will serve as a beacon of information relating to upcoming events, voting details, and candidate information. We highly encourage you all to check it out. The link is csusb.edu forward slash ASI forward slash ASI dash elections. And now for our event. Today's debate has been set up as an opportunity for the presidential and vice presidential candidates, including finance, to speak to the CSU, CSUSB community about their goals and objectives. In order to ensure the fairness and equity of the debate, we have established rules that each of the candidates has agreed to. Here are the rules of the debate. Each candidate will have three minutes for an opening statement. After all candidates have introduced themselves, we will then move into our question and answer segment, broken up into different topics. Each candidate will have one minute to answer questions. After everyone has had a chance to answer the question, a candidate may be challenged or questioned by an opponent for 30 seconds. In return, the candidate challenge or question may respond for 30 seconds. If a candidate wishes to respond to a question, they may do so by raising their hand on Zoom. I will call on the candidate in the order I see the hands go up. And if we run out of time for the responses, I will move on to the next question. After we finish the question and answer segment, the candidates will have a two minute closing statement to wrap it all up. I will serve as the official timekeeper when the time runs out for any response, you must stop talking within five seconds. If you keep talking beyond the five second warning, your mic will be suspended. An alarm notification will let all candidates know when the time is up. Candidates, please remember, failure to abide by these rules you have signed off on, or if you, so you have signed off on, or if you are consistently speaking beyond the scope of the time after 10 seconds, will result in the loss of your ability to speak for that section of the entirety of the debate. Also, candidates, please use the hand raise button on Zoom to talk. Candidates, are you ready? Let's begin. Please welcome me in joining the presidential candidates. We will begin in alphabetical order by last name. Sage Kiner, you're up first. Let me get my timer ready. Make sure you are unmuted. Okay, Sage Kiner, please begin. 
Well, hello. Thank you all so much for coming out today. I know um, with COVID going on, it's been hard coming from home, you know, doing what we got to do to make things go forward. But I just wanted to give a little brief introduction of who I am. I'm Sage Kiner, a third year environmental studies major. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the passion I have for creating good on campus and how I've kind of developed into that position. Um, a little background of my experiences is I was involved with Alpha, I am involved with Alpha Phi. I worked as a program, a philanthropy chair, and then I've developed into VP of community relations. And it was a really good opportunity for me to have leadership opportunity um, in the sense that, you know, I got to develop different connections with our community outside and on campus. I've also been involved with many several clubs who have kind of given me the opportunity to be a platform for our students and kind of create the work that we've done within the club and exchange it with all of our other uh, peers. I've also have some of my favorite um, most special to my heart is I'm involved with Alf, uh, ASI and I have worked as a program specialist all the way up to program manager. And with that experience, I really developed how to connect with administration, um, also our student groups on campus and seeing their identities and perspectives really fall in line with what we have um, in our bylaws and our policies and how we want to work as a corporation. Um, some of my favorite accomplishments would have to be um, the CSUSB Coyote Garden and being able to work with Liz and Autumn, who I call my great friends, and really develop the system of re renovating our garden and seeing it come to life this quarter and really giving the opportunity to kind of see one of our basic needs and how to focus directly on it as a student leader. Um, I've also been in an academic program called Model United Nations where I got to develop the skills to be a voice of reason for my peers and really take on the lessons I've learned within my academic career and use it in my personal life and within my academic life. Um, and the, that really has led me to where I want to take my campaign and it helped me develop the three pillars I have, which include inclusiveness, equity and sustainability. And throughout this debate, I really look forward to working with my candidates alongside them and getting the opportunity to talk a little bit about what those pillars are. Thank you, Sage. Mm -hmm. Next up, Graciela Moran. Hello, everyone. I hope all is well. Uh, my name is Graciela Moran. I am a fourth year global studies major, um, minoring in political science. Um, first off, I want to go ahead and thank everyone for joining on as these are unprecedented times right now. Um, we are kind of in a global pandemic and that's actually what I've um, been studying my entire undergraduate degree um, career. Um, so throughout the past four years here on campus, I've been advocating for students behind the scenes. I've been a sexual assault advocate working with voice peers, as well as working for the Women's Resource Center and really working towards women's rights and human's rights and the equity of all. Um, also as well, gearing towards that, I've worked at ASI as a student advocate, really working for the students and really doing the best that I can. Um, gearing towards that, it's led me into wor working and being a part of the Model United Nations team for three teams consecutively, um, two national and one international. Um, through the international one, I did get to go to Germany and listen to other students and listen to the needs of international students and really fixing world problems, which have led me to really want to fix problems here on our campus. Um, I, I'm also an RA here on campus currently while we are facing this current pandemic, um, as well as I've worked along with SAGE and many of my peers here um, working towards climate action here on our campus. The, I have a lot of progressive plans that I want to do for CSUSB all gearing towards the equity of women and the equity of men for our students, and as well as having a climate action plan, a housing plan, and really taking CSUSB to a whole nother level. Thank you, Graciela. Okay. Next up, we have Nick Sablon. Thank you. My name is Nick Sablon. I am currently the only presidential candidate with an action plan for Palm Desert Campus, the only candidate talking about mental health, parking, student homelessness, planning more events for both campuses, safety, more merit-based scholarships, and I'm frankly the only candidate with a clearly defined plan to bounce back from lockdown. Now, I say clearly defined because there are a lot of big ideas and goals among us, but not all of these ideas have solid plans behind them. My four-part platform is by far the most detailed of any candidates and is built upon the foundations of pandemic recovery, student experience, academic improvement, 
and safety and security. In the midst of this pandemic, the stakes have never been higher for who our top student advocate is going to be. I cannot imagine what my fellow students are going through right now, and it's even more difficult to think about what we will undergo in the aftermath of coronavirus. To get us through this, we need a strong student government advocating on our behalf, and I unfortunately would not trust them in their current state to do that for you. Throughout this campaign, I have heard so many students complain about how disenfranchised they are with ASI. Some people think the quality of events have declined, others feel that ASI doesn't reach out to us enough. Our Palm Desert students definitely feel that ASI doesn't do enough to advocate for them. But perhaps the worst thing I've heard from dozens of students is that ASI doesn't care about diversity. When I was petitioning to run for office back in February, I had the chance to speak to various multicultural organizations and resource centers, every one of them expressing the belief that cultural ASI events generally only cater to the majority of the school. As I was in the Pan-African Student Success Center, I heard the same sentiment from a few students there. Being February, it was Black History Month, and I knew ASI was doing a handful of events celebrating Pan-African culture. Even though I agreed with these students, I still asked what their thoughts were on that. One of the students responded by saying, ASI only wants to talk to us when it's Black History Month. Those are his words, and that sentence demonstrates a shameful lack of awareness and sensitivity on ASI's part. Newsflash ASI, using token Black events in February so you can pretend to be diverse the rest of the year is not a good look. Getting back on track, the real point of that ASI rant was to highlight that so many students at our school are fed up with how distant this corporation feels. From an outside perspective, they act like their own club with their own agenda. I cannot remember the last time ASI has made a concerted effort to reach out to the student body for feedback. So you can either go with one of the ASI insiders in this Zoom who's gonna say what they need to to get elected and give us more of the same, or you can vote for an outsider bringing real ideas and a new perspective to this office. Someone who's gonna remind ASI who they really serve, you. My name is Nick Sablon and I hope to earn your vote. Thank you, Nick. Um, and then Graciela, just to address the hand, there will be no rebuttals and introductions, but as we move into the questions, then we will get into the rebuttals, okay? Um, next up, we have Rayanne Warren. Let me unmute you, there we go. Thank you, Sierra. Hi, Coyote family. As previously stated, my name is Rayanne Warren, and I am here because I obviously want to be your next ASI president. I want to thank you all for being in attendance today during such a fragile and critical time in our, in our present time right now. And so your love and support is greatly appreciated. I'm a third year transfer student majoring in communications who firmly believes in positive change for CSUSB. There are three main topics that I wanna enact change on. Better resourcing our commuter students, making sure that they feel appreciated for their dedication to drive to our university. Secondly, I want to bring safer conditions to our on-campus on residents like myself, making sure that there is an entrance and exit on every single dormitory building. And lastly, I wanna bring more inclusivity between our campuses, Maine and PDC, making sure all cultures and genders are being heard and their opinions are being intaken. Carrying the equal importance between these three is very important for me because every single student, all 20,000 of you, fall within one of those three categories. I wanna make sure everyone is taken care of, which is why my dedication and my passion for CSUSB is what fuels my decisions to make the best possible decisions for all of us. I will give you a realistic goal within a realistic time frame, and I have several plans of action that will make sure CSUSB is not only changed within the year that I will be in presidency, but so forth, it is a generational wealth that CSUSB will have. If you want someone who loves you and makes sure that they are always fearlessly representing others, then make sure you vote Rayanne Warren. Once again, thank you. Thank you, Rayanne. Okay, and now for our candidates for Vice President of Finance. We will begin with Sabrina Chang. 
Hi, everyone. So I am your vice president of finance candidate. My name is Sabrina Chang. And a little bit about myself is that I am a second year nursing major. And when I first began coming to the school, I thought, oh, since I'm a nursing, I won't be able to really participate in much at school. But after um, staying more at school, I participated in the vagina monologues and just the coyote festivals. And I thought, oh, it's so cool to be able to be a part of such a big family and I think that um, uh, I thought how can I be able to you know, um, help the school better well um, help the school better and my platform is think twice spend wise and I guarantee that I have a strong work ethic especially when it comes to teamwork and I want to create a harmonious working environment even when there are differences so that goals can be achieved and I will address whatever concerns being brought upon my attention and build solid connections with my peers as well as clubs and that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much Sabrina. Okay, let me there we go. Okay, next we have Paula Galvez. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I am a candidate for Vice President of Finance. Over the course of these past eight months, about 229 days, I joined the math club. I became a member of the University Honors Program and I was elected into the position of Presidential Academic Excellence Scholar Liaison for the board. Alongside the Honors Program, we also just earned the gold level status for CSUSB President's Volunteer Service Award. I became and am a member of ASI as an advocate for students. I had joined and am part of six committees across campus. In the fall, I made it onto the Dean's List for the College of Natural Sciences. Aside from school, I also participated in my 10th Monopoly tournament. Above all, and above all, I have remained grounded to my values. One of them, to respect myself and respect others, to be a good person. My name is Paula Galvez and I'm a first year student who has been at CSUSB for 229 days, but, and I am majoring in general mathematics and minoring in philosophical logic. I cannot wait to share with you my responses for the following questions in this debate, despite how nervous I might get. So pardon me in advance. These current circumstances in the world serve as a reminder that at the end of the day, we don't only need a responsible leader, but a leader with a good heart a leader that will not surrender the opportunity for success of one student to provide it for 19,999, but a leader that will find a way to provide it for all 20,000 students. I ask that you listen to what we all have to say and vote wisely on May 6th. This being said, my goals are this, transparency and accountability, simplification of club allocation budget or CAB funding process, improvement of communication, both internally and externally, and promote financial literacy. I may not have the time to go over each one of these right now at this moment, but if you would like more information, please go check out my official campaign's Instagram page at Paola G underscore VPF to find out more. Thank you and good luck to all candidates. Thank you, Paola. Okay, and next we have Steven Rojo Santos. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Steven Rojo Santos and I'm a third year business admin student concentrating in accounting. Um, something that kind of stands me out from everyone else is I'm actually here from the Palm Desert campus. So um, I would, I, from what I have known, um, I'm the first PDC student running for an executive position, which before I thought, oh, I'm going PDC campus. I never thought this would be possible to get involved in something big as CSUSB as a whole, but just doing this alone shows a change for future students. Um, some things that I have planned for, for my candidacy is revising the finance committee, adding um, people from the Palm Desert campus onto that committee. Since we all are paying these fees, we, we all should have a say in where the money goes. Setting transparency, um, a lot of, we are paying $33 an academic year per student. And roughly that's about $650,000 a year. And most of us do not know where that money goes. So um, I feel as students, we do have a right to know where our money is going and have proof of where it's going. And uh, also updating the cap funding process. Uh, I have talked to many clubs individually and they have said the cap funding process is a bit tedious. 
So I want to uh, update it to make it a lot more, a lot easier for the clubs and orgs to apply for it, as well as changing the caps for um, all the requirements such as advertising. And that's it. Thank you, Stephen. Welcome everyone. Let's begin with our vice presidential candidates for finance. So remember, just raise your hand. So how you get to the raise hand function in Zoom is you go to participants and then you should see it at the bottom left corner of the participants list. I will be calling on candidates in the order that that hand on Zoom goes up. Every candidate has one minute to answer the questions. And then once you hear my timer go off, that signifies that your time is up and you have five seconds to wrap it up before you're muted. Okay, the first question. The Vice President of Finance is responsible for maintaining the financial stability of the corporation alongside the Executive Director. How do you plan to let students know where their fees go? Okay, I saw Paula and then Stephen. Okay, we will begin with Paula. All right, so uh, as really, really, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to, when it comes to math and and, all, and and dealing with numbers in general. But I want to really take a strategic approach to this. I know that you know if I could, I could, I would allow you know as much money as I can, right, to clubs and organizations to have these extracurricular events for the improvement of our students. But you know that's not the case. And so in order to do that, I want to implement uh, financial modeling into uh, my time in office. And also, you know, for, to keep it to, to to present it and have it to stay for the future, through financial modeling, I I will uh, analyze right the current and the past uh, usage of student fees, so that way we can predict how it is looking for the future and also in the present. By doing so, this will allow us to make wiser decisions, so that student fees are allocated properly. Alongside. These, photo, these models, after they're created, we will, I personally, alongside the finance committee and the executive director, will put together charts and graphs so that way it is visual, visually presented to students so that way they can see where exactly these, their funds are going towards. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have Stephen. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, my main goal is to make all these numbers uh, known for the students whether that be through a graph that they can easily access on the ASI page or find it in the ASI offices. Uh, we, are, we are paying a substantial amount of money every academic year. And most of us probably think, oh, it's probably going to events or something. But no, it's going to a lot more things. I mean, uh, I feel as students, we deserve the right to know how much, is, how much of our money is actually going to clubs, how much of it is going to events that are going back to the students, how much of it is going to, to research grants and aids. Um, so just making a, a list or a graphic or, of some kind to, to show the students, hey, this is where your money is going. Thank you very much, Stephen. Okay, and then Sabrina, would you like to respond to the question? Uh, yes, uh, could you just repeat it one more time? Yes, absolutely. Um, the Vice President of Finance is responsible for maintaining the financial stability of the corporation alongside the Executive Director. How do you plan to let students know where their fees go? So, although I do not know everyone, I am open to getting to know all majors and help departments and clubs have the necessary resources. Once I learn how the CSUSB's expenses are handled, I will uh, do my best to quickly learn the materials and efficiently so that I can allocate the funds properly. Um, I am interested in understanding all aspects of allocating funds with my position and plan to utilize clear communication in the process of decision making. Um, one of the clubs that I've spoken to uh, with still does not have its own bank account. I want to learn how this process works and hopefully just expedite the procedure. And I also intend to monitor how other CSU campuses are handling the situation and taking notes on how to improve um, our own education situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, our next question for the vice presidential candidates for finance. Most students do not know other opportunities where they can get money for their clubs and organizations. How do you plan to let them know? And remember, we're going by the, yeah, there we go. Okay, I see Paula's hand. Okay, I see Steven's hand. 
So we'll start with Paula. All right, so as some of you may have heard in the past or may haven't, there are club allocation uh, budget workshops that have been held uh, by the current uh, Vice President of Finance, Christy Robles. She has put these together in the past. And so I want to continue that um, and definitely improve it in a, as many ways as possible by getting feedback from those students who have participated in the past and the, how their clubs were able to uh, successfully get through that transition of, you know, uh, putting in that request for funds. So I want to continue that and also spread the word out even further to all clubs and, and possibly set up an email platform. So that way, whenever we have these workshops put together, um, we can let clubs and organizations know directly, hey, you know, we're going to be holding these, so come and find out more about it. And if you can't, you know, pr provide al alternative ways for people to, to, to learn the information on how this process works. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have Stephen. Um, so since the uh, cap funding workshops are ma mandatory for clubs to attend if they were to want to receive the money. Um, I would, <coughs> sorry, I would um, advertise it in there as uh, by saying, hey, if you can't do cap funding, um, here, here's what cap funding can provide you. And if you, if what you need it for, if what you need money for cannot come from, what can, cannot be provided from cap funding, here are other options where you can get the money from. Um, and as mentioned, since it is mandatory for every single club, try to have as many workshops as possible. That way, every student, every club and organization has an opportunity to go to a, go to one of these trainings. As you know, some people might not be able to make a certain time, certain day, or even host some online. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, and then Sabrina, would you like to respond to this question? Um, yes, please. But could you repeat it one more time? Yeah, no worries. And then okay. just so um, just so I can, I want to make sure if you want to respond sooner, the hand function, um, if you go to okay. the participants list. So at the bottom of your screen, you see participants. When you click that, a list should pop up on the right side of your computer. And then at the bottom of the participants list, you should see options and one of them should be raise hand. Um, is it the reactions? Because I've been pressing the um, reactions with the hand. Was it working like that? Um, I have not seen your hand gone up. Oh, Go okay. Um, I'll try to, oh, I see it. Okay. Yep. I've been pressing something else. I think that's why. No worries. I know Zoom okay. can be tricky sometimes. Okay. Okay. Um, the question is, most students do not know how other opportunities, most students do not know other opportunities where they can get money for their clubs and organizations. How do you plan to let them know? So I think currently right now, um, just Zoom sessions would be a lot easier to let them know, but also just um, promoting the services um, but on our ASI page so that more people can reach out to us. I think that would be really nice. Um, also providing, I think, incentives for them to participate, um, be it more funding um, goodies or whatever, so that they want to come to go look at the CAB meetings. Um, I think one of my um, platforms is to see if departments or clubs can have their own um, designated study rooms and meeting rooms in order to facilitate a better learning environment and get to know each other better. I think when they're in those types of rooms, they'll be able to see like, like we could talk more about cap funding there too as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Our third question for the candidates for Vice President of Finance. What is the Howell Grant and what are your thoughts on it? Again, raise your hand if you'd like to respond. Okay. Well, if no candidates would like to answer the question, then we will move on. So that wraps up the segment for the um, candidates for vice president of finance. We are now going to switch over to the presidential candidates. Our first category is basic needs. So just a refresher for those of you who are presidential candidates. Once I ask the question, hand goes up in the chat. I will call on people in the order that the hands appear in the chat um, or on the participants list. Um, you have one minute to answer the question. Once your time is up, you have five seconds to wrap it up. At that point, if you do not do so, you will be muted. Other candidates, if you would like to respond, make sure that hand goes up and I'll get to you as soon as I can. 
you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal, and then the candidate who was challenged has 30 seconds to respond to that rebuttal. Okay, moving on to our first question. We often hear the words basic needs on campus. What do you think is the most significant need that our students face? And why do you think that this need is more pertinent than other unmet needs? Okay, I see Graciela, I see Sage, I see Rayanne. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start with Graciela. Perfect, thank you for this opportunity. Um, when it comes to basic needs, we wanna acknowledge our homelessness issue. And we also wanna acknowledge our domestic violence survivors and sexual assault survivors. When we think of the whole perspective of basic needs, we need to target the marginalized community of those who are escaping endangerment right now. So with CSU's basic needs projects and the major ASI has done a wonderful job promoting basic needs. And for me, the, the need that we need to address right now is domestic violence right now. Thank you very much, Graciela. Okay. And then the next hand that I saw go up was Sage Kiner. So let me unmute you. Okay, go ahead, Sage. Thank you for this question. Um, I know that basic needs within the CSU system, there's an initi initiatives that support students' well-being. Um, and that's by case by case. It could be immediate food assistance. It could be financial assistance. It could be short-term emergency housing, which we could work more on. Um, I think as an organization uh, of ASI within different departments on campus, we could definitely work to include more of these different um, topics. It's also connecting with students, um, the additional resources that they may need um, to support not only them on campus and their academic career, but also their communities and their homes that they live, they go back to each day. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sage. Okay, and then next we have Rayanne. Let me just unmute you. Okay, Rayanne, go ahead. Nope, that's, there we go. Okay, um, so thank you, Sierra, for the question. Um, I want to address basic needs as um, housing security and financial security. Um, we definitely need to work with our population as far as um, how homelessness and those who need housing and also financial security, those who are going without meals um, every day. And we also need to introduce people into Handshake, which is a very um, vital app that we use throughout our school to help people find jobs within the community of San Bernardino and on campus. Um, when I transferred to Cal State San Bernardino September 15th, on September 17th, I had a job on campus. It's about having to introduce people to those resources that we have available on campus. And one of the biggest basic needs is introducing them to that vast world of the things that we have um, that are available for them to get on track as far as their security and housing and financial needs. Thank you very much. That was right on time. All right. And then moving into a follow-up question for, um, from this initial question. Prior to 2020, what did you do to help your fellow coyotes address this need? Okay, I see Sage, I see Rayanne, I see Graciela. Okay. We are going to go ahead and begin with Sage. And then Nick, if at any point um, you wanna to respond to the question, just raise your hand in the chat. Um, are you able to raise your hand in the chat? Let me unmute him really quick. Uh, yeah, I put my hand up. I, I don't see a hand thing. I put a thumbs up. You guys just straight up skipped me there. Uh, so I would like to respond to that question, please. Um, yes, but just so you know, so the hand has to go up. It's, so go oh, to the participants list. Hand. I thought it was a, the button here no the in the chat if you go to participants yeah. on so the list bottom right it should say raise hand there we go yep so we'll I go ahead and let you hand. respond to that yeah now it's up sweet okay so go I ahead and respond question? to that first question yes okay so um your question was about the most significant needs, Sierra. And while I heard important needs, uh, I didn't hear from everyone what I think is necessarily the most significant. We need to define what most means. I believe that most means the most widespread in our campus. And obviously, I think the most significant need is definitely going to be financial aid. 
Uh, Cal State San Bernardino was originally founded to serve underprivileged students in the Inland Empire. Um, and after this lockdown, our economy is going downhill. There are going to be a lot of struggling students. So I believe our ASI is going to need to work a lot harder to lobby for more financial aid. We're going to need to lobby hard. And I also believe we're going to need to fight with the university to offer more merit-based scholarships, not just to the people who qualify for financial aid, but also to students like me paying out of pocket. Everyone's gonna need support. Everyone's gonna need help. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then, so candidates, I know that that was his initial response to the first one. I'm going to lower all of your hands at this point. If anybody would like to rebuttal anybody else, this is the time where you would raise your hand. Okay, I saw Graciela's hand first, so she's gonna go ahead and rebuttal. Reminder, you have 30 seconds to rebuttal and then Nick, you will have 30 seconds to respond. Thank you so much, Nick, for that. But I also wanna clarify that uh, Cal State San Bernardino was not built for the underprivileged. It was actually built here because San Bernardino used to be a white domain area. So I wanna go ahead and clarify that. Also too, I wanna go ahead and clarify when it comes to financial needs, um, a lot of people at our campus don't pay out of pocket. And if, if it is, it's not a substantial amount. A lot of us get a lot of the grants. So when we talk about what we need, we need to address the more persistent when it comes to well-being and it comes to actually living. Okay, that's the time. Thank you, Graciela, for that. I'm going to go ahead and meet you. Okay, and then Nick, now you have the opportunity to respond. Just a reminder, um, when you hear that timer, you have 30 seconds, okay? It was 30 seconds I have to speak. Yes. Okay. Well, Graciela, I think those are great points. Um, I, 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 I am of the understanding what I've heard from professors on this campus, what I've heard from my parents, I am a second generation coyote, is that the school was built to serve minority populations in the in Inland Empire, underprivileged areas uh, with minorities in them. And I think that uh, really, addressing your response about um, student, not all students pay out of pocket. Of course they don't. We have a lot of students who accept financial aid, but if you're gonna sit here and you're gonna argue saying that we shouldn't support students that are paying out of pocket, that's wrong. Okay, that's all we have there. Okay, Sage and I'm gonna unmute you. This is your opportunity for a rebuttal. Reminder, it's 30 seconds. I just wanna say, I respect all of our decisions within our comments and I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to have well thought out ones. But I would also like to kind of say that um, it's important to not define just one priority of basic needs because within campus and within the organizations and programs that we've provided through ASI, we've actually acknowledged all of them and not enough students have been enough to come unless maybe you have experienced one of the programs that we put it on. Um, they are built to, identify each and every single one of them and the importance between each one. Okay, right on time. And then Nick, I will give you 30 seconds to respond. Okay, go ahead. So Sage is right. There are a lot of problems affecting CSUSB students, but that wasn't the question. The question was the most significant problem affecting students. And that's what the majority of us answered with. All right. So thank you all for your responses. Our next category is on shared governance. So the first question, what do you know about shared governance and how will you ensure that ASI continues to be a part of the shared governance process? Again, this is in the order of hands raised in the Zoom participants list. Okay, I see Graciela's hand. I see Nick's hand, I see Sage's hand, and I see Rayanne's hand. Okay, so you will have one minute. Graciela, we'll begin with you. Okay, when we talk about um, shared governance for everyone, it can really mean something different. Um, well, for me, when I think of shared governance, I think of everyone working together and all of us working to lobby for our personal rights. Um, but Sierra, can you please um, repeat the question again for me, please? Yes, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. What do you know about shared governance and how will you ensure that ASI continues to be a part of the shared governance process? Okay, and so when it comes to ASI and my background working and knowing everyone um, who's held that title, um, we, we can do better. You know, there's, there's obviously that 
we, there's always room for improvement um, from every single numerous thing that I've done when it comes to Model UN, trailing back to Women's the Resource Center. Um, we need to share govern, governance with everyone. And um, it just takes someone to say it in a respectful way. Thank you, Graciela. Okay, next up, we have Nick. We unmute you. Go ahead, Nick. Great. So uh, from my understanding, shared governance uh, essentially implies that we have multiple components in the Cal, in Cal State University San Bernardino working together to provide the student experience that we know. Uh, we have ASI. Uh, we have var various other corporations like the San Manuel Student Union. Uh, we have Coyote Dining. We have uh, faculty. We have staff. There are so many different gears turning together uh, that ASI just needs to figure out how we can best work together um, with these other gears in the machine that is Cal State San Bernardino to best serve our student body. Um, so some examples of this, I think, uh, look at the faculty, look at the departments. Uh, we have a lot of students at Palm Desert complaining about a serious lack of classes there. Uh, they're forced to take unreasonable numbers of online classes. I think we can easily work with them to advocate for more in-person classes there. And then for students at our San Bernardino class uh, or, or uh, campus, excuse me, they want to see more online classes. Um, and then I think we can work with Coyote Dining to promote sustainability and more dining options. Thank you. That's your time. Yep. All right. Next we have Sage. Thank you for this question, Sierra. Um, shared governance to me is having the opportunity to bring students, not only students, but everyone within the mixture of it, CSUSB, including, like Nick said, faculty, um, our Kaidu Dining, different um, entities within our campus that make everything work together. Um, but I also want to be sure that we include that, yes, uh, like Grace Ayla said, um, our past and our present leadership, they take into accountability the resources that they have to make sure that we are being voiced as a student body to include that our ASI team who is full filled with students are there to make sure that we are being heard and we are being counted for and it's it's these things that you know you can have all these things you want to say but are you going to have the accountability to back up what you're going to be doing when you're at a bigger platform and shared with different people um i've had the opportunity to be at these tables and have relationships with these people that you are having the conversations about these ideas that you would like to put forth and i understand that it takes time that you you're not gonna be the, you're gonna be the first one that lays it down but you're not gonna be the last one and that's okay with me thank you <laughs> thank you sage okay and then graciela don't worry i see your hand i'm going to give you the opportunity to rebuttal after we hear all of the candidates responses to the question okay all right and then rayanne thank you for the question sierra um shared governance to me means partnership and equality and inclusiveness ownership accountability and responsibility those are the key factors of shared governance. And so in order to make the campus functioning, to make CSUSB function better as a whole, we have to take into accountability that every single one opinion, it, their opinion matters. We, I kind of think of shared governance as democracy. And in order for us to obtain our power, we have to get it from the individuals. And so we have to derive our decisions and our um, judgment making based off the individuals who also have opinions and who also have decision making um, opportunities. So shared governance is to also just take into account everyone's opinion in the CSUSB institution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rayanne. Okay, and then Graciela, now you have your opportunity to rebuttal. Just a reminder, you have 30 seconds, okay? Okay, perfect. Um, this question goes to Nick. When you talk about shared governance and the, the campus partners, when you talk about Palm Desert Campus, um, I've personally been having Instagram lives on mine and talking to Palm Desert Campus rep representatives and students. I want to know how you can further that and continue that because I'm hearing one thing and you're proposing another thing and as well as sustainability. Um, what do you want to do with Coyote Dining? Because there's a sustainability committee doing the best that they can. I want to know what you can offer our Coyote students who have climate action at their number one priority. Thank you very much, Graciela. Okay, and then Nick, now you will have 30 seconds to respond. Well, those are great questions. Uh, I only have 30 seconds to respond, but seeing as how Graciela asked me two completely different questions, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on Palm Desert Campus because I think that is more important to me than sustainability. Sustainability is important, but those students, uh, 
they they just take priority over composting. So I think that Coyote Cruiser is used as a band-aid by the university for serious systemic problems at that campus. Um, I think some solutions are increasing the number of Palm Desert representatives on our main campus ASI from one to three. We can work with the academic departments to offer more in-person classes, increase the number of events. Thank you. All right. And then just a follow-up question for everybody. Shared governance has been an ASI goal for a considerable amount of time. What plans do you have to increase student involvement and participation in the student government process? Again, I'm looking for hands in the chat. Okay, see Nick's hand. I see Graciela's hand, Sage's hand, and then Rand's hand. All right, so Nick, go ahead and begin. You have one minute. Well, I think that right off the bat, um, I'll, I, my campaign is powered by the ideas and concerns of my fellow students. I've been talking to them. These are where these ideas are coming from. Uh, and a number of students have really griped about the fact that they feel that ASI doesn't reach out to them enough. A lot of the new students feel that they see the letters, they see ASI doing stuff. They have no idea what they even like do, what is their purpose on campus. A lot of the older students like me, I'm a third year, they feel that things like events and student engagement have really declined over, uh, over the past few years. So I think right off the bat, one way we can really work, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but your question was kind of focusing on student engagement, correct? Um, yeah, so how would you increase student involvement and participation? Well, I think we can really improve our events by listening to the students. I mean, after this lockdown, a large percentage are gonna uh, really depend on that to get a sense of normalcy. Um, so I think we're gonna be in serious need of campus events and some ideas I'm supporting include a coyote night market with vendors and food trucks, bringing winter console back, where did that go? Uh, live music and open mic nights, thank you. Thank you. All right. Next we have Graciela. Thank you so much for that question. As a fourth year gearing into my fifth year, and I've been here, I wanna say the longest, um, I've seen our school transition and I've talked to the students. I'm an RA right now. So I, I was an RA for first years and also I'm an RA for international and older students as well. So I think I can see what we can do. It's partnering up with our health center and creating more um, partnerships with Planned Parenthood and creating politics right now are fun. ASI has been doing the best that they can and been doing the best. We just need to enhance it and keep building off of their ideas. When we think of a spring concert, I think that's amazing. But right now what we need to do is get back to the politics of it. And right now, our best worry right now is COVID-19. We need to make this our priority. And as, as I understand that for Nick, student engagement for concerts is something that is on his priority and he's wondering where that is. But right now we need to build partnerships with our marginalized communities, Greek organizations. We need to reach out to our centers and partner with them and do more. Thank you, Graciela. Okay, next up we have Sage. Can I have a question one more time, Sierra, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, there we go. Shared governance has been an ASI goal for a considerable amount of time. What plans do you have to increase student involvement and participation in the student government process? Yeah. So as you guys may know or may not know, ASI is a student staff. Um, we get to pick students that have vouched for what they've worked on, how they could, you know, if they just want to get the opportunity to be involved with an ASI. Um, shared governance is the ability for admin and students to connect, not even just admin, it's different entities on campus, like I said in our previous question. Um, and with that being said, it's just how are we going to develop more opportunities, which we're already doing, like Grace Ella said, with an ASI. Um, it's really how could we include the students and how they want to see it go by, because it's not just us as ASI. What are we going to do? You know, we want to see the feedback from our students of how we can improve our shared governance. And if they're not aware, uh, not aware of what ASI is all about, I highly increase um, opportunities for them to get involved with NESI and get to our programs. And I'm curious to see how others are gonna bring that to our table um, and how events are a priority over different things that we have planned within shared governance as a whole, because that's where our voices are being heard as students. Thank you. Thank you, Sage. Okay, and then Nick, don't worry, I see your hand. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to respond after we hear from all the candidates. So Rayanne, go ahead. Thank you again, Sierra. 
Um, so in order to get students more incorporated with uh, shared governance and having them more included in the uh, student government process, I think we should be able to talk to every single resource on campus. We should not give an empty feeling to any individual on campus. So that means we have to be inclusive of on-campus residents, commuter students, CCC, every, in, um, every entity within the CCC, going into the SU and speaking to adult reentry, speaking to LGBTQI, speaking to every single entity that is on campus, including communications clubs, um, STEM clubs. We have to be able to include their opinions in the shared governance for, um, for it to run smoothly as a whole. Communication is a very big thing for me, not just because I'm a communication student, but communication is how you get your point across to another individual. And without substance within communication, you're just speaking fluidly. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Um, Nick, just a reminder, 30 seconds for a rebuttal. So I do just want to assure the student body, uh, Gracie Ella made a comment about how I only seem to care about events rather than other very important issues. Obviously, she didn't look at my four part platform, which includes pandemic recovery, student experience, academic improvement and safety and security with the ideas I mentioned answering the question following under the second falling under the second part of my platform. Um, if you look at Graciela's platform, which I have up here on my phone, um, you're going to find a number of very big, ambitious ideas like restoration of funds and damages done by COVID, climate action plan, gender equity, women's health care, with no explanation. Thank you. Graciela, would you like to respond? Raise your hand by indi to indicate that you would like to respond. Okay. Just a reminder, you have 30 seconds. Um, I don't understand what was the question, but I, I can go ahead and talk about my platform. So I've been working on campus and these issues, yeah, they're very progressive, but as politics right now, progressive is what we need. We don't need the status quo because what you are wanting to do is a status quo. It is what, so we need progressive, we need new, we need what someone who's already been doing the work. I haven't seen you been doing the work. I've been doing as long as, with Sage and my other candidates, we've been putting in the work. Thank you, Graciela. All right. And then Sage, um, I don't know if you have a rebuttal, but I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. If you do have a rebuttal, just know you have 30 seconds, okay? Okay. Um, this is just in general. I wanna know what um, the other candidates think ASI is besides just events and the importance that it brings to campus. I know many of my other candidates, they understand the importance of what we actually do within the organization, within the corporation. And I'm just curious to see like what plans, not to be hurtful or anything. I just wanna know more of what they're actually thinking. Okay, so, um... One candidate can respond if you'd like to respond. Please. Okay, Nick and Ryan, you both have 30 seconds. And then Ryan, we will start with you. Go ahead. Um, thanks for the question, Sage. Uh, so like I said, I'm a third year transfer student, which means I just um, arrived to CSUSB approximately seven to eight months ago. And the very first um, entity on campus that welcomed me with open arms was ASI. And um, that was actually you. Um, and so I appreciate the question, Sage, because I'm glad that you asked what ASI does um, as far as the corporation besides just putting on events. And it's really a, um, a community engagement uh, to make sure we all know that you're there. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next up, we have Nick. I see ASI as our chief student advocacy organization. You know, they do very important work lobbying for funding, going back and forth with the university, demanding the resources our students need. Uh, currently, I think they could be improved. Uh, I think right now there are status quo candidates like Graciela, who are uh, ASI insiders who are going to continue to give students more of the same with very few changes. Whereas you have a candidate like me, an outsider from Greek life, looking to transform ASI and put it back in the hands of the students. Thank you. Okay. Graciela? Um, yeah, thank you Sage so much for that question. As we've worked hand on hand, not only with ASI, but we've all, we're coming up with a sustainability plan in our actual classes that we're doing right now. But kind of to answer that, um, I took a step back from ASI kind of because Nick, because I got diagnosed with 
with the disease and I had to take a step back. So when it comes to that, I'm not an insider. I took a step back and I saw what we can do. Um, so thank you, Sage, for that question. ASI has not only saved my life, but it saved so many students' lives. Thank you, Graciela. Okay, we are moving on to our next segment. So our next category is focused on leaders and candidate campaigns. Any candidate may answer the next set of questions. Just remember you have one minute and I'm going by the order of the hands that appear. Our first question, the executive officers serve as non-voting members of the ASI board of directors and serve at the pleasure of its voting members. With this in mind, we have seen some pretty ambitious goals during this year's campaigns and platforms. What are some of the promises that you are making to the student body and how do you plan on making good on these promises with the limitations from the board? Okay, I see Sage first. I see Graciela. Ryan. Nick. Sabrina. Okay, Steven and then Paula. Okay, so we will go ahead and start with Sage. One more time, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, the executive officers serve as non-voting members of the ASI Board of Directors and serve at the pleasure of its voting members. With this in mind, we have seen some pretty ambitious goals during this year's campaigns and platforms. What are some of the promises that you are making to the student body and how do you plan on making good on these promises with limitations from the board? So I understand that, you know, the, the candidates that, you know, they have big ideas that they want to move forward with. And I, I appreciate their hard work that they have taken to research all of these. And I also understand that, you know, I have my experience with the board and I've actually been at the table to be a voice for students outside of being an ASI. And I understand that, you know, there is going to be kickback for multiple things that you want to bring. But the main goal is to understand, like I said, you are going to be the one that if you want to bring an initiative, if you want to bring a resolution, you have all these ideas that you would like to move forward with. But in reality, you have to learn what your whole team would like, what your whole, what you're getting from the voices of the other students. It's not just going to be what you want initially. And that's why I'm not going to promise that, you know, I'm going to put forward all these things that I want to do. I'm going to, if I get the position, I'm going to take my team, what they would have to say, and we're going to move forward with how we could um, implement different resolutions and ideas and understand that, you know, I may be the first one that has it laid out, but I'm not going to be the last one to have it, like Nan said, generational. We want it to be able to, you know, leave our paw print for other people. Thank you, Sage. All right. Next up, we have Graciela. Thank you, Sierra. Um, so already tackling, echoing what Sage had said, I had been on the table as well, and I've been behind the table too as well as a non-ASI student. And so I've seen what it, what it takes, and communication is something that's really ideal when it comes to having the board. Currently right now, I have my IG lives, and I communicate with those candidates right now, and we talk about the issues that we want to do. And from how it's looking right now, we we all have progressive ideas. And I think that's something that's really important. Although again, what Sage said, we're a team. And so if we don't work cohesively as a team, then we, then we can't get anything that we want done. The whole basis of wanting to be a leader in this is to want to promote greatness and peace and kindness. And so if we don't promote that, then I don't think um, we can get really anything done. Um, so it's just building off of communication and same, same as Sage, um, I completely agree with that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Graciela. All right. And then next up, we have Rayanne. Thank you, Sierra. Um, I think a lot of people think that being ASI president is just a figurehead for the corporation, um, but really it should be getting involved in student lives and seeing what we can do to make um, their lives easier and their lives better during this higher education. Um, so just some of the things from my platform as far as inclusivity and commuter students and um, on-campus residents, to begin with inclusivity, I think we need to start incorporating our pronouns. We need to start saying what our pronouns are, our proper pronouns, and um, asking what everyone's ethnicity is instead of um, just assuming. For our commuter students, I'm hoping that we can get some commuter lounges for them, not just the SU, which is an open, um, an open view for everyone, and maybe some incentives to change the narrative of CSUSB being a commuter school. And also um, for our on-campus residents, maybe we can get some more safety included. Thank you. Thank you, Rayanne. 
Okay, our next candidate, we have Nick. Look, supporters of my campaign know that I have not been making false promises. My extremely detailed platform is, it, it's packed with truth, all right? And one thing I'm gonna say is that ASI, the ASI president, we don't have a lot of pull with financials. So while I say things like I'm going to fight for, for uh, more money for certain things or more uh, funding, I can't promise that. So it's important for every candidate to provide alternatives if that doesn't work out. So if you look at my mental health plan, uh, I say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight for CSUSB to properly fund CAPS for once. But if that doesn't work out, because I, I have no guarantee that's going to happen, that's not my department, I'm going to partner ASI with CAPS to present more workshops, to pre present more group sessions, which can be um, just as effective for many people as one-on-one -on -one mental health counseling sessions. Uh, so unlike a lot of candidates, I actually have to have, to have a plan. I can't, I can't use experience as a platform. I can't use my popularity as a platform. Uh, so that pretty much answers that question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Sabrina. Okay, so I find mental and physical health promotion important, especially as a nursing major. In times like these, it feels terrible to be cooped up all day at home. I want to work with our counseling and psychological services to promote more workshops and Zoom sessions and make them readily available. I also want to promote the Institutions for Child Development and Family Relations Zoom sessions as they provide relationship parenting and more advice during COVID-19. I attended one of the sessions and it was really eye-opening. I think offering and promoting these types of services allow more people to reach out, even if they think that they do not need it. Knowing that someone is there to answer questions and listen when you need can be very very comforting. I think it would also be interesting to create a CSUSB confessions page and to hear out the thoughts of our students anonymously. And finally, I want to leave YouTube links of at-home exercise videos on the ASI page and other platforms to promote physical health that students can do for free. So I really want to advocate on mental and physical health promotion. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Stephen, and just for those looking to rebuttal, don't worry, I see you, we'll get to you. I wanna make sure all the candidates have an opportunity to answer the question. Okay, Stephen. Oh. Thanks, Sierra. Uh, could you happen to repeat the question again, please? Yeah, no worries. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. The executive officers serve as non-voting members of the ASI board of directors and serve at the pleasure of its voting members. With this in mind, we have seen some pretty ambitious goals during this year's campaigns and platforms. What are some of the promises that you are making to the student body and how do you plan on making good on these promises with limitations from the board? Uh, thank you for repeating it. Um, one of the things that I did, I do wanna strive for is revising the cab planning process. While I know that some might not agree or I might get some pullback from the finance committee or any other committee such as uh, revising the caps a bit, uh, it's a matter of seeing what gets utilized more and what more what sections the clubs would like to have seen used more. Um, one club in particular that I have talked to in detail, it's a Catholic Newman Club of the Desert. They have mentioned that the advertising funds is not enough and that they would like some things included such as printing services into that because most clubs make their own graphics and they don't they don't pay people to um, get them printed and the, that's the one thing that they struggle with more is like where, where am I going to get the money to get this stuff printed so that's one thing um, but it's just give and take regardless of what role you are in being a leader there you also have to learn how to give and take and be open-minded all right that was right on time thank you very much Stephen okay next up we have Paula all right so so from a, a financial and a business point of view, right, I am running for vice president of finance. I am promising and vowing to, to support you know, the other executive uh, positions, president and executive vice president, and also the board of directors, right, in being able to really carry out these goals. Um, as Sage was saying, we all have great goals uh, and, you know, visions and, and values that we want to bring, that we're bringing towards the table uh, for all for our respective positions. But at the end of the day, we have to have a strong backbone. We have to have someone who is willing to go the extra mile and dedicate their time to learn more about financials, to learn more about how money works, especially in this educational system. The impact that we are having from COVID-19 are 
you know, immense. And so we have to learn how to bounce back. And I know that I'm not the most knowledge person in this, but I am vowing to, you know, to support our, 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 you know, executive officers um, and also learn and grow as a person myself and increase my knowledge in this uh, finance uh, world from this type, from this perspective. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, now we're getting into rebuttals. So I see uh, Graciela and I see Sage. Just a reminder, you have 30 seconds for your rebuttal. So we will begin with Graciela. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, so I kind of want to rebuttal Nick when he talks about um, popularity. It's not about popularity. It's actually about reaching out and asking the questions. Um, also too, I want to say state this about my progressive plan. There's a website online that tells us where every single allocated fee goes to. So when I created this plan, it wasn't just me just throwing out things. I know where the numbers go from. And also too, carrying out on mental health. When it comes to CAPS, that comes from the president's office. And when we have resources, the care team that's for 24 hours. So if someone needs something right immediately, I've worked with them and we've taken that to another level. So when it comes to therapy session, I can understand. Thank you. Thank you, Graciela. All right. Um, Nick, would you like to respond? Wow, so uh, Graciela seems to really be obsessed with my campaign. So uh, in regards, I'll focus, there were a lot of things said in that response. So I'll focus on uh, the mental health aspect. Look, I get it, you're an insider. You know a lot more of the particulars of where money comes from and where it goes. I'm not making promises on the money. I'm making promises on alternatives we can present. And I actually did, I, I, I wanna be open about this and I have struggled with depression. That's an issue I, 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 I deal with regularly. And when I had problems in the fall, CAPS told me to come back in two months. The care team was not an option. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you very much. Okay, Sage. Yes, I had a question just for Nick. Sorry, just to answer real quick. Um, I know that you have a lot of things, um, of promises that you know you're not be able, you're not gonna be able to make uh, just happen. So kind of like what you just said, but you understand like what it takes to still become. Um, I think it's important to be knowledgeable about what you are gonna be wanting to have as an initiative. Um, just for example, like the sustainability, it's not just composting. And you know, it's not, if you, I saw in your campaign, it also said that you wanted to start a committee. I'm actually the co-chair with our VP. Um, so it's just important to get it knowledgeable of you know, what you actually have to go for. That's all I gotta say. Thank you very much, Sage. All right, here we go. And then Nick, if you would like to respond, you have 30 seconds to do so. Well, let me say this. Every one of my promises, if you go to Instagram, if you go to at Sublon 2020 right now, you're going to see a plan behind every one of my, my promises. And Sage, you know, you talk about the sustainability thing. You're going to take a joke out of context, the, the composting joke. That's desperate. And to address your point about the fact that we already have a sustainability committee, you can't find anything about that online. And that's part of the problem of what I'm trying to get across with ASI, that there is no student access there. The fact that you have to be an ASI insider to know that exists is a problem. Thank you, Sierra. All right. And then Graciela, we're not gonna do any more um, rebuttals on this question just because we've already had some rebuttals. So we're gonna move on to the next question. Um, okay, so this is our last question and it will be general so any candidate can answer. I do wanna make sure that all of our candidates are remaining respectful of one another. It's really important that we can have civil discourse to discuss these issues. Um, so our first and or our, I guess our final question, if you could vote for anyone on this platform other than yourself, who would that be and why? Okay, I see Nick, I see Graciela. Okay, I see Sage, Ryan. And then candidates for VP Finance, you are welcome to answer this question as well. Once I see your handle, make sure you get added to the list, okay? Nick, we'll go ahead and start with you. You have one minute. I'm gonna say this, I love Rayanne's platform. I think she's awesome. Uh, ever since I heard rumors of her campaigning back in like February, people were saying, oh, I know this girl, Rayanne, she's running. Uh, I've had the chance to look into what she stands for and just overall, I really like it. I really like generally, I have, I have some friends who are choosing to support her and they're upfront with me about that. Um, and I think she's just a real straight shooter. I think she's a solid candidate who would do a good job in the position. Thank you. All right, next up we have Graciela. Go ahead, Graciela. Thank you. Um, after working with Sage when it comes to Model UN, 
we've not only worked in ASI, but I also want to say that Sage has made ASI um, an, an amazing platform. And as well, too, when it comes to sustainability, I know I can trust Sage as we are working right now towards so many goals. So when it comes to voting for someone, I would vote for Sage. And I'm putting my professional background aside and actually from like a, a someone who is very intelligent in politics, I know Sage will do a wonderful job when it comes to a marginalized community and as well as our campus as a whole. Thank you very much, Graciela. All right. Next up, we have Sage. So I just want to start out with, I know all of these individuals have very impactful um, things that they want to push forward for. And I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to talk with most of them and really get to know what they're all about. And I don't want to answer that question just specifically because I don't think a leader should do, be defining who they should be, you know, kind of be putting down because I don't think that's right for anyone. Um, but I am appreciative of all of the work that we have been going on through our campaigns. And I know that's on a definitive answer and that's going to upset some, but I think that's important as a leader to have compassion and really understand the kindness that we have for each other. And vote, oh sorry, and vote for who you want to vote as students. This is you, your guys' voice and opportunity to see who you really resonate with the most. Okay, thank you very much, Sage. Let's just do this real quick. There we go. Oh, okay. Next up we have Ryan. Thank you, Sierra. Um, and thank you, uh, Nick, for your very nice comments. I appreciate them. Um, like Sage, I am going to give a general answer um, because like Sage also said, we should not be defined by who we should vote for if we were not running, but we should be defined by who is on this platform right now speaking for intention. Um, we all have something different that we want to bring to the table and we all offer um, many different platforms and many different campaigns. And not one campaign is right and not one campaign is wrong. Like Sage said, find someone that you resonate with. And so um, with that being said, there's not one particular person that um, out of my other three candidates that I'm running um, against that I would choose, but find someone that is speaking with intention and not for attention. This is your campaign, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Rayan. All right. Next up, we have Sabrina. Okay, so I'm still deciding, but at the moment, from what I'm uh, what I've seen from the debate, I think two people have really caught my attention. I think both um, Graciela and Nicholas have very um, strong opinions that I. I appreciate because it's very interesting seeing the dynamic between the two and I'm just going to just look on um, social media and see more about their platforms and also all, all the other candidates platforms to see which one resonates with me more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All mm -hmm. right. Next up, we have Steven. Thank you, Sierra. So from both presidential and vice presidential. Um, I, I'm looking at this as a student first, not as a candidate. I'm picturing myself, I'm not running at all. Um, every single candidate from, bo from both VP and presidential have really good valid points. And I have actually been following all of, all of them, taking a look at what they're, what they're planning to do. And um, all, I'm, all I wanna say is uh, I will be happy with anyone. Either way, we're all here to represent the students. That's our, all of our main goals. So that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. All right, and then we have Paula. Are you on, there we go. So just as, as others have said, um, I won't be giving a, a specific answer, but I really believe that it says a lot with the simple fact that, that we are here, that we have come here for the main goal that at, you know, at ultimately, we want to see our, our, our fellow classmates succeed because we, yeah, we're running for these executive positions. We're running for, you know, to hold these positions at ASI, but we are also students at CSUSB. We are all peyotes and we should be proud of that. So I really appreciate all the effort that all the other candidates have been putting into their, their campaign, because like I said, that says a lot that, that you are dedicated to, to support these students and be there for them. 
Uh, and so with that being said, you know, whoever is elected, I will respect them just as much as if another person were elected, because I know that we can all do a good job. So thank you. Thank you very much. At this point, if anybody would like to rebuttal, um, raise your hand in the participants list. If not, we will move on to closing statements. So I'll give you all a couple seconds to see if there's any hands that go up. Okay, so this concludes our question and answer segment. Candidates, you will now have two minutes for a closing statement. Again, we're gonna do the timer the same way we've been doing all day. Um, we will resume in alphabetical order by last name, beginning with the presidential candidates. Sage, you may go first. Let me unmute you, you. Oh, perfect. Wait, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're good. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. I just want to say thank you guys so much for allowing me the opportunity to even be on this platform and have a debate with all these other individuals who are so great and have so much to bring to the table. And I'm really excited to see what we all come up with in the next future. In the future, um, I just want to say that no matter what, I'm still going to be going, uh, doing what I'm doing to create good on our campus, no matter the outcome. And I hope that with everyone that's actually putting effort towards this, they do it as well and you know have good intentions, like Rayanne said, behind everything that you do, because at the end of the day, we're doing it for you as the students. You you know, we're not doing this just for us because it does take a toll on all of us individually and we understand that coming in with the position but we want to do better for you we want to know what we could do direct directly that affects you and you know create these identities that we have not just as, uh, as a coyote um, but even just from using pdc and um, ccsb main campus using it as our coming as a team together like together ahead is my, what my whole thing's about because i've seen it and i really appreciate and respect the relationships that we create with individuals and it's not a i when i get into the position it's when we get in the position what are we going to do and that's something that i really look forward to um, just expressing thank you Thank you very much. Okay, our next candidate, oh, our next candidate is Graciela Moran. Thank you, everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for even coming on and as well as running. That in itself, it takes courage. Um, when it comes to my campaign, um, it's very progressive, and and that's okay um, because we should all shoot for the stars. Um, I've been working my hardest, um, my personal hardest, when it comes to sending my message across and wanting for the greater good of our campus as a student first. Um, I think representation is something that's very important. And I also think to being real and being whole and being in just yourself. So when I spread my message, I try my best to be as real as a student. And I also know that if not me, then who? And if not Sage, then who? And if not anyone here, then who's going to say what we really need? And I think that's the, the biggest thing is that when we choose who we're going to vote for, it's the, the bigger message of what are we going to do? Because as Sage said too, I, I quote her a lot um, because she says a lot of the what I think, you know, and I and I think it's really, I'm still going to be hustling and still be doing my thing after this, advocating with Planned Parenthood and advocating with first survivors and women's rights and equity of all. Um, but it's, it's taking it to a different um, level. And I want to thank everyone too for listening in and um, keep a lookout on my plans because they're still gonna be happening. Thank you. Thank you, Graciela. All right, next up we have Nick Sablon. My fellow students, if you want more of the same, go with one of the ASI insiders. That's your prerogative. Odds are, if I asked most of you how ASI is doing, it's probably not going to be a resounding amazing, but rather more of a, yeah, all right. There are candidates throwing out ideas for things like improving international relations and implementing family housing, replacing the word unrealistic with progressive. The ASI insiders call me status quo, but I am the only candidate talking about mental health, parking, student homelessness, planning more events for both campuses, safety, and more merit-based scholarships. I'm sorry, that's not status quo. That's what students really care about rather than international relations. If you want someone with a detailed plan, with concrete ideas, backing up every single thing they say, changing ASI for the better, vote for Nick Sablon. Thank you. All right, next up we have Rand Warren. Let me unmute you. There you are. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you everyone for being in attendance today. Um, I open, I am, overwhelmed with emotion and appreciation for everyone that's here today that's taking an hour and 30 minutes out of their Wednesday to come and listen to myself and my other candidates. 
And um, I just want to say that since stepping foot on CSUSB's campus, I've met some of the most amazing future leaders the world is not ready to see. And, you know, this is coming from first generation achievers to graduate student believers, all the way to student athletes, to student leaders, and from all cultures and all genders, thank you all for inspiring me to use my voice and stand up for change within CSUSB. It's time for inclusiveness, openness, integrity, safety, and better conditions. It would be my pleasure and an honor to work alongside with you and for you to bring positive change throughout CSUSB. I'm Afro for Change. Please vote for Rayanne Warren. Thank you. Thank you, Rayanne. All right. And now for our candidates for Vice President of Finance, we will begin with Sabrina Chang. So thank you everyone for coming to the meeting today. Um, I say what I mean and mean what I say. If I tell you that I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna do my best to help you. And if I tell you that I will probably not be able to help you, but we'll, um, I will get back, uh, but we'll get back to you. I will remember to get back to you on the information. I will never tell students that I'm gonna help and then just leave everybody hanging and confused. I'm straightforward and I always persevere and can, will continuously demonstrate this char characteristic if I am elected. Um, I wanna learn how to properly allocate funding and I advocate on your behalf. I have a strong work, work ethic. I am a team player, a conversationalist. Do not hesitate to approach me if you have any questions or concerns, I'm here to listen. Remember Sabrina Chang for Vice President of Finance. Thank, Thank you, you, Sabrina. All right, next up we have Paula Galvez. There you are. All righty, well, here we are, right at the end of this. There's one week left before our voting opens, one week left for, for all of us to post as impactful messages as we can and expand on our visions and goals, regardless of the outcome. I will continue to advocate for students just as I have been doing the moment I stepped foot at CSUSB. I'm excited to see what the future has in store for not just myself, but in the next three years that I have here, but also for the student body, ASI, and all my fellow candidates as, as well. I am really excited to get back to CSUSB physically, right, and, and continue to share my, my collegiate experience with my classmates, as you all ultimately are, right? Until then, during this difficult time, please allow me to, to provide that opportunity for your bright future. Thank you to all my supporters and endorsements, Circle K Club, Student California Teaching Association, and Panhellenic. I, I appreciate it. Thank you to all candidates for putting in the effort into your campaigns to demonstrate your unique leadership abilities and qualities to, to, to a much deserving exceptional group of students that we have at CSUSB. Lastly, thank you to the audience. As you know, your voice is much louder than ours. And I simply want to make sure that your voice is heard and, and fulfill your needs. In case anyone missed it, my official campaign's Instagram, Instagram account is at Paola G underscore VPF. There you'll be able to learn more about my, my, my platform and my values and my mission statement as well. So thank you all. And remember, Paola Galvez for VP of Finance. Thank you, Paola. All right. And then next up, we have Steven. Thank you. Um, so I just want to do a quick uh, thank you to everyone, Sierra, for, for moderating and every every co-host, you know, making sure everyone's doing what they're doing. Everyone for even just coming on. You know, I see that there's 78 people on and that's a little stressful, but, you know, um, it's showing that students actually do care that what, we're, what, what everyone has planned. But um, friendly reminder, uh, I my plan is to just set transparency to see, to show, have every CSUSB student know where all their associated student fees are going to. Um, revising the finance committee to involve the Palm Desert campus more and to update the CAB funding process to make it um, a lot easier for, for clubs and organizations to apply for, as well as adding more things that can qualify under CAB funding. And just remember, um, regardless of who you vote for, every vote counts. Don't, I, I highly encourage uh, to tell your other fellow coyotes to go out and vote. Once they get that email, um, some people might think, uh, oh my, it's just one vote, it doesn't matter. That's not true. Every vote matters regardless of who you vote for. 
and um, just keep a lookout for anything else we have because you know voting op opens in a week. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. All right. So, fellow coyotes, thank you so much for joining us today, our executive officers debate. I would like to thank our candidates for joining us remotely today. Remember, voting begins on May 6th from your My Coyote emails and will conclude on May 7th at 11.59 p.m. Thank you again, stay safe and healthy, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you.